ovotesticular disorder of sex development, known as OTDSD, is a reproductive condition where the gonads develop elements of ovarian and testicular tissue. This can occur in three configurations. One, an ovary on one side of the body and a testy on the other. Two, a mix of ovarian and testicular tissue on one side and a complete ovary or testy on the other. Or three, a mix of both tissues on both sides. Molecular research has developed multiple causation theories, ranging from translocations of the SRY gene onto an X chromosome to duplications or inactivation of specific genes. Those with this condition do not have both sets of functioning reproductive anatomy, nor both sets of external genitalia, and therefore cannot fulfill both reproductive roles. Thus, affected patients develop one reproductive role and are therefore male or female. OTDSD is one of the rarest DSDs, affecting approximately 1 in 83,000 newborns, a rate of around 0.001% births. In fact, OTDSD is so rare that only about 500 cases have been reported in the medical literature. At conception, there are a variety of possible chromosome combinations. Of the 500 known cases of OTDSD, 60% have a carrier type of 46XX, 25% show various forms of mosaicism, a mix of carrier types, 15% have a carrier type of 46XY, and less than 1% have 46XX-46XY chimerism, which results from the fusion of two genetically unique embryos. Let's discuss the most common form, 46XXOTDSD. Around the eighth week after conception, the 46XX fetus undergoes gonadal differentiation. Because there is no Y chromosome with an active SRY gene, the bipotential gonads begin to develop into ovaries. And yet, despite the lack of an SRY gene to code for testicular development, the fetus begins to develop partial testicular tissue amidst the ovarian tissue. This testicular tissue results in the production of anti-malarian hormone, inhibiting the full development of the internal female anatomy. It is theorized that a rare mutation of the gene SOX9 is often a contributing factor to OTDSD. In typical circumstances, this gene helps encode the development of testicular cells after SRY gene activation. In 46XXOTDSD cases, SOX9 may be expressed without the SRY gene, leading to the growth of testicular tissue amidst the ovarian tissue. The degree to which the XX fetus will develop the male reproductive, or Wolfian structures, versus the female reproductive, or Malarian structures, depends on the amount of anti-malarian hormone released from the developing testicular tissue. If there is no developing testicular tissue, no anti-malarian hormone is produced, and the female reproductive structures fully develop. Conversely, if there is any testicular tissue, anti-malarian hormone is produced from the developing testes, and female reproductive development is inhibited. The testosterone produced from the testicular tissue then stabilizes and develops the male reproductive system. Sex development in humans and other mammals is mutually antagonistic. If one reproductive system starts to develop, it automatically inhibits the other. This is why individuals with ovotesticular disorder still develop towards one or the other reproductive role. The genetic and hormonal mechanisms do not allow both male and female systems to fully develop in the same individual. Thus, the inability for the complete development of both systems means that individuals with OTDSD will have one main reproductive system and one secondary system with partial non-functioning elements. For example, an individual with 46XY OTDSD may have a male reproductive system with vestigial remnants of the malarian structure such as a partial uterus. Or an individual with 46XX OTDSD may have a female reproductive system, 
with vestigial remnants of the Wolfian structure, such as testicular tissue mixed with ovarian tissue. Although some cases of OTDSD are diagnosed at birth, most cases are not diagnosed until puberty. The presence of both ovarian and testicular tissue in individuals with OTDSD means that five factors of sex development must be considered to determine the individual's sex. These include karyotype, gonadal tissue, hormone production slash reception, internal reproductive structures, and external genitalia. Once analyzed and the development path of the fetus is understood, a sex determination decision is made by specialists, which considers the best possible biological, psychological, and social outcome for the patient, including the chances of future fertility. Fertility rates among individuals with OTDSD are incredibly low. However, when such individuals are fertile, it is usually the ovarian tissue that is functional, not the underdeveloped testes. There is evidence that 50% of affected patients can ovulate, but the production of sperm is rare, with only three documented cases of males with OTDSD fathering children. There are important psychological issues to address if one is diagnosed with OTDSD. Like all other DSDs, it's critical that a diagnosis is not withheld from the patient. Doctors and parents have a moral obligation to inform the patient of the diagnosis as soon as possible. And the method and timing of providing information depends upon the patient's age and cognitive development. It's also critical that a patient with OTDSD fully understands the details of their development path what having the condition means, and how they can move forward. Understanding themselves and their bodies is critical for healthy psychological development and accurate medical treatment. In conclusion, individuals with OTDSD develop elements of ovarian and testicular tissue due to a variety of complex genetic and hormonal anomalies, many of which remain unknown. With loving support from parents and peers, and medical professionals who care about the patient's health and development, those with OTDSD can live happy and healthy lives.